The movie starts with Bridger, a young boy, sitting and reading in his room. He hears a loud noise coming from the living room where a man is watching TV. He is clearly drunk and asks Bridger to get him another beer. Bridger asks him to lower the volume but the man does not budge and asks him to get a beer for him instead. The kid revolts by taking away the remote to lower the volume. But that only enraged the drunkard and he wrestles Bridger to the ground. Bridger tries to free himself but his mother gets home just in time. She hits the man on the head with a skillet and frees her son. Then, she gives him his pills and asks him to gather his bag. The two run away from the abusive drunk man to save their lives. On the road, his mother, Helen, apologizes to him for not being there for him at the time. For once she just wants to find someone who would treat Bridger right. He wants the same too. Helen tells him that the right kind of love lasts a lifetime. Bridger wishes that they both can find it someday. For now, they have no place to go and only $197 with them. And though the odds are totally against them, the mother and son duo seem unfazed by the tough situation. They are positive that they will make it. They drive for hours, talking and having fun. They stop for gas refills and eat the gas station food and keep moving toward the coast. The following day comes and the car starts giving them trouble. Bridger makes some temporary adjustments with the carburetor but is not sure how long the car would go on for. They also realize that they only have $16.22 remaining. But Helen keeps the morale up and the two drive on. While on their way, suddenly, the engine starts to smoke and Helen and Bridger escape just in time before it catches fire. But Bridger's heart is unable to take the stress of it all and he faints. It is then shown that Bridger had once had a major operation when he was a little boy. A panicked Helen calls for the ambulance and they are able to revive Bridger. As he regains consciousness, the paramedic advises them to get a proper checkup done at the hospital. But Bridger insists that he now feels fine. Helen and Bridger arrive at an auto shop where the mechanic informs them that their truck is completely totaled. They owe the mechanic $100 but Helen tells him that they do not have that kind of money right now. They hand him the last of their money and offer him their services around his auto shop. The mechanic introduces himself as well, and upon realizing that the mother's son could use some help, he tells them that they can sell their car to a yard and some money for the scrap. Helen wonders if he would consider that as his payment but will does not get out there too often since it's too far. That puts Helen in jeopardy. Seeing that they are in dire need of kindness, Will offers to waive the tow charge. Helen and Bridger feel grateful to the man. They are ready to head out to a nearby motel when Will offers them a place at his house, seeing as they can't afford a motel anyway. He brings them home, to his big property, where they see his daughter, Clover, tending to a horse. Though she does not bother introducing herself. Will shows them to a trailer that has not been in use for a long time but Helen is grateful nonetheless. She and Bridger get to cleaning the trailer, meanwhile, Will hooks them up with the electricity. While cleaning, Bridger spots Clover out by a tree, reading Pride and Prejudice all by herself. He thinks of approaching her but the girl clearly does not want to be approached. They exchange looks throughout the day but never a single word. Later that night, Will treats them to a home-cooked meal, and both Helen and Bridger are grateful yet again. At the dinner table, Clover refuses to participate in conversations. She keeps her face hidden with the mane of her hair and acts weirdly. Without a word, she excuses herself and leaves. Will apologizes to them for his daughter's rudeness because it has been a tough year for them. After his wife passed away when Clover was little, it has just been the two of them living by themselves. He then offers that they can stay with them for as long as they like. Helen only plans on staying until she can raise enough money for a car and rent. She obviously needs to get a job, and Will offers to put in a good word for her at his friend's restaurant. He also tells Bridger about the high school he can go to and that he can hitch a ride with Clover and her friends the next day. Clover wakes up screaming from a dream. She dreams that she is in a forest with Bo, Trent, and a few other girls, and Bo has a gun with him. He plays with it, not caring about the safety of the rest of his friends. But when Trent tries to stop him and take the gun away from Bo, he refuses to let go. The two guys wrestle for it and the gun accidentally goes off on Clover's face. That is when Clover wakes up, shivering and hysterical. She touches her scar and then reaches for a box on her nightstand. We see how Clover has been punishing herself for a while now. She has marks on the inside of her arm. But she does not get a chance to do it again as her father suddenly comes into her room. Seeing him, Clover breaks down and cries because she thinks she looks so ugly that no one would ever love her. Will consoles his daughter and assures her that she will find the right heart for her. The next morning, Will helps Helen get a waitressing job at his friend's diner in town. And for that, Helen is immensely grateful to him. Later on, he even goes out of his way to the junkyard and haggles with the man to get $200 for Helen's car. Clover's friends arrive to pick her up for school. When Bridger hears the car, he hurries to freshen up so he can make it on time. Clover's friend, Albert, has a serious crush on her and sometimes acts like she's his girlfriend. Just as Bridger comes out of the trailer, Clover's friends ask about him. She tells them that he's just a stray her dad picked up from the road and asks Albert to drive away. Left behind, Bridger decides to walk to school. On his way, a stranger on a bike pulls over and offers him a ride to the school which is around 10 miles away. Bridger refuses at first, considering he is a stranger and for all he knows could be a murderer, but then agrees to take his help. The man brings Bridger to school and Bridger thanks him for his help. 
The two bond over their interest in motorcycles and the man introduces himself as Roman. He is a teacher at the school. Bridger gets his schedule and enters the biology class where Clover and her friends are already present. In the class, Albert notices the fresh marks on Clover's wrist and realizes that she is still punishing herself. He expresses his concern for her but Clover asks him to mind his business. Just then, Bridger walks into the class and steals everyone's attention. Clover's classmate and her ex-friend, April, notices her checking out the new guy and makes fun of her. Trent, one of the guys who was involved in Clover's accident, asks April to mind her own business and to leave Clover alone because she has already been through enough. April reminds him that it was because of Clover that he got kicked off the football team and all she had to do was confess to the judge that she saw Bo holding the gun. But all Clover said was that she does not remember what happened that day. Trent does not hold that against Clover but April clearly does. Bridger and Clover exchange looks during the class but never talk to each other. In the hallway, a guy named Bo bullies Clover. He drops her books on purpose and calls her Scarface. Bridger rushes to her help but Bo does not like that. He threatens Bridger to stop helping Clover but Bridger does not budge. This angers Bo and he gets violent with the boy. No one stands up to the big bully that Bo is, but before the situation can get out of hand, Roman walks in and Bo and Bridger pretend like they were just talking. No one says a word and Bo escapes without being held responsible. Bridger helps Clover with her stuff and finds a copy of Pride and Prejudice. He tells her it's his favorite book and that impresses Clover. However, she does not say anything and walks away. On his way to class, Bridger bumps into Edward who thanks him for standing up to Bo to help Clover. He tells him how no one would ever stand up to Bo like that. He then apologizes to him for leaving him behind earlier that morning and the two head to Roman's shop class together. In the class, Roman asks a question and Bo gives him a wrong answer. Instead, Bridger answers it correctly and Bo curses out loud. This angers Roman and he sends Bo out of the class for misconduct. As he is leaving for the day, Bridger runs into Bo, who beats him up for getting in his business earlier. Bridger is unable to defend himself as he is not all that strong. Roman walks in just as Bo threatens Bridger and leaves. Bridger is in a bad shape and even struggles to breathe, but he refuses to tattle on Bo. Despite Roman's concern, Bridger walks away. Helen's first day at her job ends and she thanks her boss for hiring her. He has no idea what this means to her. Later, Will picks her up from work and gives her the money he got for her car. Helen expresses her gratitude towards him. Then the two get some food together. Bridger walks all the way back home and is completely exhausted by the time he gets there. When his mother returns, she tells him about his day and asks about him. Bridger tells her that he will not be returning to school anymore. Helen wants him to finish school but Bridger hates this place. He only wants to save up enough money so they can get out of there. Later that night, Bridger cries in agony, remembering his childhood tragedy. Helen comes in to comfort him and Bridger asks her what is so wrong with him that he always feels so different. Helen tells him that he is different because he is a miracle. She makes sure he has had his medicine and assures him that everything will be fine. The next morning, Clover and Edward gang up against Albert and ask him to give Bridger a ride to school. Albert finally agrees, seeing that neither of them would ride with him if he did not. But when Edward comes to get Bridger, Bridger lets him leave without a word. He then finds his mother's note on the counter in which she asks him to give school another try. Bridger eventually gives in and starts getting ready. Then he walks to school. At lunch, April approaches Bo, telling him that she is no longer talking to Trent. She complains about how Trent forgave Clover for not taking his side in court, and that he still blames Bo for the accident. Bo blames Trent too, telling her that it was Trent who took the gun from him. Bo holds Clover and Trent responsible for ruining his life and promises to make them both suffer. When Bridger enters the cafeteria, Bo picks on him. He first pretends to apologize to Bridger and convinces him that he regrets his actions. Just as Bridger shakes hands with him, Bo pushes him away and makes a laughing stock out of him. Bridger falls to the ground and all the food gets on his clothes. Clover rushes to help him but she feels responsible for what is happening to him and tears up. Bridger tells him it is not her fault and walks away. Clover screams at all the people staring at them for making fun of someone they disapprove of. No one says a word, and they just keep staring at her. She gets out of there and finds Bridger. She apologizes to him for what happened in the cafeteria and also for judging him earlier. She thought he was like the rest of the guys but he is different. She also thanks him for standing up for her the other day. Bo gets a warning from Roman about behaving himself and treading lightly. On the way back home, Clover, Albert, and Edward find Bridger walking alone. Clover and Edward want Albert to stop the car and give him a ride home. Albert finally stops the car but just when Bridger is about to get in, Albert drives away, leaving him behind. This makes Clover mad at him but Albert refuses to give Bridger a ride because he obviously feels that Bridger stole Clover from him. He argues that she was supposed to be his and Bridger ruined his chances with her. Clover yells at him, telling him that they were only ever going to be friends and nothing more. But even then, he refuses to go back for Bridger. When he drops Clover off, she storms away from him. Meanwhile, Bridger keeps walking and suffers heat exhaustion. His already fragile health does not help him much either. But before matters can get worse, he gets spotted by Roman on his drive back. 
He stops the car and helps Bridger. He gives him some water and a change of clothes. As Bridger finally comes to his senses, he talks with Roman about Clover. That is when Bridger finds out about Clover's history in this town and how she got the scar on her face that she tries to hide. Clover went through a lot of reconstructive surgeries but could never get rid of the scar completely. Bridger thinks that she is beautiful nonetheless and Roman attributes that thinking to Bridger's kind heart. Just as Bridger is about to hitch a ride with Roman, they notice Clover coming over on her horse. She apologizes to Bridger about earlier and Bridger hops on behind her. Clover brings him to her favorite spot where she has only ever brought her father before. There Bridger notices a fort house that belongs to Clover. They both sit in the fort and Clover tells him about her horse Donnie. Her dad bought him for her when she was five. Bridger tells her that he likes her dad and Clover tells him that she likes his mom. Bridger appreciates that. He looks through some of Clover's old stuff and finds a notebook inside which is an old newspaper article about her mother's accident. Clover gets a little sad as she recalls how her mother passed away when she was five. Bridger tells her about how he has never even met his father who left him before he was born. When Bridger admits that he's starting to like this place, Clover feels like the comment was directed toward her. She looks away from him and Bridger wonders why she will not ever look at him. Clover tells him that she's just shy but Bridger knows the truth about her accident now. He tells her that everyone has scars of their own but Clover does not believe that. Bridger quotes a line from her favorite book, Pride and Prejudice, and that makes Clover smile. He cautiously reaches for her hand and Clover feels all the excitement of the first love. She returns home in a super happy mood and her father is pleasantly surprised to see her that way. He hesitantly asks her if it would be okay for him to lend some of her mother's clothes to Helen, and much to his surprise, Clover does not mind that at all. Later that night, she knocks on Bridger's door with a box of her mother's old clothes. She shyly hands it to him and with it, her copy of Pride and Prejudice. After she leaves, Bridger turns over to the first page and finds a note from Clover that says her favorite place to read this book is by the big tree, under the moon. Bridger sneaks out of his trailer and meets Clover by the tree. They spend their time reading the book together. Bridger notices that Clover is looking at him now and she tells him it's because it's easier in the dark when he can't see her scar. This prompts Bridger to show Clover the real him. He unbuttons his shirt and right in the middle of his chest is a long scar that he got from the heart transplant he had as a little boy. His honesty finally allows Clover to be her real self with him and though she is scared, she lets him look at her scar. Bridger kisses her and tells her that she is absolutely beautiful, accepting her as she is. The next morning, Albert apologizes to Clover for behaving badly the other day. Clover forgives him and so does Bridger. The four of them ride to school, with Bridger and Clover holding hands in the back seat. As the days go by, Bridger and Clover get closer and closer. Bridger and his friends also begin standing up to bullies like Bo. Clover no longer feels the need to hurt herself and enjoys spending all of her days and nights with Bridger. Soon, the day of their graduation arrives. Sitting in the audience, Bridger starts feeling a little uneasy. He excuses himself to go to the washroom and Bo and his friends follow him. While everyone celebrates out there, Bridger struggles to even breathe inside that washroom. He pops in his pills and tries to calm himself down when Bo walks in with friends. The three boys corner Bridger and refuse to let him walk away. Meanwhile, when Helen asks around for Bridger, Roman realizes that Bo is missing as well. He puts two and two together and runs to get to Bridger. While Bridger tries to hold his own as he defends himself against Bo, he is still unable to fight off three guys at once. Bo badly beats Bridger up and he falls unconscious. Roman finally arrives there but he's a few seconds too late. Finding Bridger bloody and unconscious, Roman punches Bo who then runs away from there. He then rushes to Bridger's aid. Bridger is taken to the hospital and Bo is arrested. Soon, the doctor arrives and informs Helen that the blunt force trauma that Bridger suffered has caused him to sink into a coma. He also informs them that Bridger's body is rejecting the heart transplant all of a sudden. They have put him on the transplant list but the doctor stresses that it might take several months or even years. Helen tries to keep herself together but Clover breaks down upon hearing this news. She only prays that Bridger will be okay. She, along with Helen and the rest of Bridger's friends, stay by his side as each day passes, and prays for his quick recovery. One day, Clover's friends who used to torture her earlier come to apologize to her for all the trouble they caused her. Clover makes it a habit to read their favorite book, Pride and Prejudice, to Bridger. One day, as she is reading him a passage from the book, Bridger opens his eyes and immediately asks her to marry him. Clover, realizing that he is finally awake, cries tears of happiness and kisses him, not hearing what he had asked her. So, Bridger asks her again and Clover breaks into more tears and happily accepts his proposal. The doctor informs Helen and Will that while Bridger seems to be recovering well, and his new medication for his heart seems to be working too, there are no guarantees when it comes to how effective it will be. He needs to be monitored and needs to stay on his medication. But Helen is glad to know that her son might get well after all, that she can soon take him home. Roman comes to visit Bridger and tells him that Bo will be doing some jail time for aggravated assault. Bridger feels responsible about Roman losing his job but Roman tells him to not sweat it. 
Clover and Bridger then announce their marriage in front of everyone and their plans to spend the summer at the beach. The news takes them all by surprise, especially their parents. Will excuses himself to get some air and Clover follows him to talk. Helen, on the other hand, is really happy for Bridger because all of his dreams are coming true. Bridger tells her that he wants her to come with him and Clover and finish their drive to the coast together. Meanwhile, Clover does not think her dad is happy with her decision. Will tells her that he is happy and that he couldn't ask for a better man to marry his daughter, but he's also worried about her. Knowing Bridger's health condition, he does not want Clover to get hurt in the end. Clover tells him that Bridger has already given her enough love to last forever, and that she loves him. She only wants her dad's support and will gives her his blessings. In a small ceremony outside her house, Clover and Bridger exchange wedding vows and get married to each other. Everyone is happy for the couple and celebrates their happiness with them. Soon, it's time for them to leave for their honeymoon. Clover bids goodbye to her horse and her friends. Roman arrives to see them off on his motorcycle and presents it as a wedding present to Bridger and Clover. Both of them are grateful for the present and his kindness. Bridger and Clover decide on riding the bike to California, and their parents permit them to do so while they follow them in the car. They finally make it to the ocean and camp on the beach. After a long day, the four of them sit, facing the ocean and take in the view and the ocean breeze. Soon, Will announces that he will be retiring for the night and has booked rooms for him and Helen at a motel down the road. They are leaving the trailer for the newlyweds, for their first night together. Before they leave, Helen and Bridger marvel at the fact that they finally made it. They hug each other, saying I love you, and then the grown-ups finally leave. Bridger and Clover spend a wonderful night together, making confessions of love and happiness. The next day, Bridger feels grateful to be waking up next to the love of his life. He wraps a blanket around himself and steps out of the trailer, taking in the magnificent view of the ocean. He walks down to the beach and sits on the sand. Hours later when Clover wakes up, she walks up to Bridger on the beach. But as she watches him sitting there, hunched over, she realizes something is wrong as he just won't wake up. She cries and cries, begging him to wake up but Bridger had passed away long before she found him. Will and Helen arrive at the scene, and though Will tries his mighty best to wake him up, Helen accepts her loss as though she had always been prepared for this day. She lays next to her son, head on his chest, and cries. A few years later, we see a family of four, Helen, Will, Clover, and her and Bridger's baby girl, playing and laughing together.